Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Warhammer 40k painting tutorial. This time we'll be tackling the Black Legion Space Marines, particularly the new Chaos Lord Obsidius Malex from Blackstone Fortress. And as usual, I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. When you are assembling your miniature, it often helps to only partly build the miniature to help with painting those hard to reach areas. As you can see here, I've kept the left arm and the backpack separate to make painting them much easier and super glued them to some lengths of wire. The first step after assembly is to prime and as the miniature is wearing black armor it makes sense to use a black primer. The primer you use is your choice but you may find some black primers may leave a grayish finish. In this case simply brush on some abaddon black before you start painting. We will be starting with the metallic areas and using Warplox bronze to paint the armor trim. However, we first want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easier to work with, but if we apply a couple of coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with a little less water than paint. With your thinned mixture, apply the Warplot Bronze to the armor's trim. Try not to overspill too much onto the armor itself as we want to keep this black. If you do make a mistake, this can be resolved by using some Abaddon Black. Continuing with the metallic areas, we next want to tackle the silver areas. For this, we'll be using Lead Belcher. Remember to thin down your paint like before in order to improve the coverage of the paint. For the gold areas, such as the symbol on the shoulder pad and the muzzle of the plasma pistol, we'll be using Balthazar Gold. As we have completed the base coat of the metallic areas, we should clean our brushes thoroughly and change our paint water to avoid any cross-contamination of metal flakes to our other paints. With that done, we will next be using Eschen Grey to paint the skull on the waist, as well as some but not all of the organic looking pipes on the armour. For the remaining pipes, we will be base coating these using some Storm Vermin Fur. Remember that this and the previous Eschen Grey are not base paint, so it may require a couple of thin coats. To base coat the hammerhead, you want to start off with a base coat of Mechanicus Standard Grey. Next, we'll be painting the deep red areas of the miniature. These include the inside of the cloak and the wrapping around the hammer. To give these areas that deep red color, use some Doomball Brown. Continuing with the red, you will next want to tackle the brighter red areas, such as the plasma pistol vents and the top knot of the Chaos Lord. Base coat these areas using Mephiston Red. For the leather belt around the waist, base coat using Rhinox Hide. For both the skull on the top knot and also the bare head of this miniature, use a base coat of Rakhal Flesh. The final base coat will be applied to the fur pelt and for this we'll be applying a base coat of Zandri Dust. With all the base coats completed we can now begin applying some washes. These will flow into the recessed areas of the miniature which will help to create depth and improve the miniature's level of detail. When applying washes I like to mix in a little Lamium Medium to reduce the strength of the wash. This is entirely optional but I find results in a much smoother transition between the darker and lighter areas. Alternatively you could use a small amount of water just to thin out the wash slightly. The first wash to use is Agrax Earthshade and this will be applied over the bronze, brown and gold areas of the miniature. Next we'll be using some non-oil in much the same way, however this time we'll focus the application to the pipes, dark red and silver metallic areas of our Chaos Lord. For the fur and the skull on the top knot use a wash of Seraphim Sepia. The final wash is one of Reichland Flesh Shade, this will be focused over the bare flesh of the miniature. In addition to this, I'll also be applying a small amount of this wash to the bottom sections of the fur pelt for some slight differentiation in the colour. Once the washes have dried, we can then start with our highlights. To do this, take a brush with a fine point and dip it into some slightly watered down paint. Then use this brush to paint on a thin line along the raised edges. This will help to create depth in the miniature and really help to bring out those details. We'll be starting things off with a highlight to the black armor and claws of the pelt using Stegodon Scale Green. Continuing with the armor and claws, we next only want to highlight the upper edges using the slightly lighter Thunderhawk Blue. The very final step for the armor is to do something called an extreme highlight. This is where we use a very small amount of paint to pick out the corners of the armor panels, which will really help to make those details stand out. To do this, we'll be using Fenrisian Grey. In this next few steps, we'll be highlighting the various organic pipes across the miniature. For this, use Skaven Blight for the pipes painted with Eschen Grey, and Baneblade Brown for the pipes that we base coated using Storm Vermin Fur. Once again, we'll be using Eschen Grey, however this time we want to use it as a highlight to the black areas between the armor panels and also the rear side of the cloak. 
For the edges of the hammerhead, you'll want to use a highlight of Dawnstone. In addition to this, you can also use this paint as an extreme highlight to the areas that we painted in the last step. The next step will involve highlighting two different areas of the miniature, but we'll be using Wazdeka Red for both. First, we'll be using it to pick out the edges of the area that we painted using Doomball Brown. Secondly, we'll be using the Wazdeka Red to highlight the glowing red star on the hammer and also the bulging eye on the right shoulder pad. Once again, we'll be tackling two areas with our next highlight, but this time we'll be using Troll Slayer Orange. This will be used as a regular height on the vents of the plasma pistol and as an upper edge height for the hammer and eye. The final step for painting our red areas is to add an extreme highlight of Fire Dragon Bright to both the plasma vents and the glowing red details. For the leather belt around the waist, add a fine edge height of Scrag Brown. To pick out the fur of the pelt, apply some thin lines of a shabti bone to the raised strands of fur. Before we move on to the metallic areas, we first want to highlight the edges of the facial features. For this, I'll be starting off with deepkin flesh. Focus this highlight along the raised parts of the face, such as the cheekbones, bridge of the nose, forehead creases, lips and chin. To finish off the skin, use a very small amount of pallid witch flesh to pick out the most prominent facial features. The final areas to hide are the metallics. Again, remember to take care when applying these. We'll be starting things off with a highlight to the edges of the armor trim using Brass Scorpion. Next, the edges of the silver areas can be picked out using Stormhost Silver. Finally, to hide the edges of the areas that we painted using Balthazar Gold, use some Gehenna's Gold. And here we have the completed Obsidious Malex. I finish things off by varnishing and assembling the components before creating a simple basing scheme. Now, whilst this miniature focused on Obsidious Malex, you could apply the exact same colors and techniques to any Black Legion Chaos Space Marine. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video, such as my Everlasting Wet Palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.